China's manufacturing PMI rebounds to 50.1 in March, but still hovers above that 50 mark. So what does this mean for the world's second largest economy? I'm joined by China economist at Capital Economics, Julian Evans Pritchard, to find out. Welcome to Dukascopy, Julian. A slight rebound in China's manufacturing PMI. So does this mean that the stimulus is working? Well, to some degree, we can see it um, in the official PMI and the increase there. Um, but I think it's worth bearing in mind that, you know, the two PMIs paint a very mixed picture. So obviously you have the one from HSBC um, that still fell, even though there was a slight upward, upwards revision in the final reading. Um, and I think that reflects the fact that the stimulus has mostly benefited larger firms, uh, which are more heavily weighted in the official index. Um, so the answer is that it's benefiting some areas of the economy, particularly large firms in heavy industry, because they're, they're the ones who have, who have access to bank lending, so they're in the best position to benefit from the recent rate cut. Um, but other parts of the economy, I think, are still struggling, conditions are still deteriorating, um, and the stimulus hasn't really helped those smaller firms. Um, so definitely a mixed picture still. Many were surprised by China's activity expanding in March. What kind of result were you expecting? Well, we, we had been expecting something slightly weaker, um, given the string of uh, sort of disappointing data that we've had recently. Um, so obviously it's a welcome surprise on the upside, um, but I don't think it changes the, the broader picture um, that most of the acti activity data uh, so far, the, you know, last quarter, has been was extremely weak, uh, much weaker than uh, most people had expected, uh, and that's the reason why expectations for the PMI were so low. Um, so even though it seems like the large conditions among larger f firms are holding up a bit better than expected, um, overall it still looks like we've had a very uh, sharp slowdown in Q1, um, and we're still forecasting GDP growth of 6.8% in Q1. So already dropping below the government's 7% uh, target for this year. Earlier this week, in an effort to boost property sales, the People's Bank of China cut the down payment needed to buy second homes and foregoing the tax on some deals. Will we be seeing more easing and further stimulus down the road? I, I definitely think it's a, it's a good signal. Um, I mean, one thing to bear in mind is that uh, I think a lot, a lot of the measures that were announced in the property sector and the main goal of these is to sort of address uh, the oversupply in that sector and not necessarily to boost growth um, because even though even if sa uh, property sales start to recover as a result of these measures um, that won't necessarily translate into a pickup in construction activity which is obviously what matters for growth um, and the main reason for this is there's just so much oversupply at the moment and developers inventories have been growing for, for quite a long time um, so we think that developers will, will sort of take advantage of any pickup in sales to sort of offload some of this uh, backlog of unsold property, not necessarily to sort of launch new projects. Um, and if anything, the government is trying to restrict uh, the number of new projects launched. Um, in addition to the down payment uh, changes, we also had sort of talk about um, fewer, you know, restricting land sales in, in areas where there's oversupply. So. I think the main goal there is, is more long-term, it's about rebalancing the property sector, not necessarily um, shoring up short-term growth. And what that means is they're going to have to do other things in order to shore, um, shore up growth in the short term. So we're still expecting uh, many more measures uh, over the coming months. Uh, we've got one more rate cut uh, this quarter. We've got another triple R cut this quarter as well. Um, so we think that they'll have to do uh, quite a bit more than they've done so far if, if they want to prevent growth from slipping and if they still want to hit their target for this year. Julian Evans Pritchard from Capital Economics joining me there. That's all from me for now. Thanks for tuning in and be sure to check out our regular updates and exclusive interviews here on Dukascopy TV.